Okay, thank you very much. So I'm sure that uh, you're wondering about some of the terms that we used in the material. Um, just want to uh, touch upon them. Malware. Do you know what malware is? What is malware? It's uh, many uh, email. <laughs> huh? many send the email malware. Okay, that's one of the things that uh, malware can do. It's basically, uh, it's, all, it's like a virus, basically, in your system. Okay, it's a virus. Virus. Okay, uh, other uh, words include worm. Mimizu, right? These, uh, a worm type malware can spread to other um, devices in the network. So if you have two computers at home and they're connected on a LAN cable and one of them gets a worm, that program can go onto the second computer. Botnet. What's a botnet? Okay, a botnet is a network of bots. What's a bot? It's basically like an automatic program that does things. Okay, so for example, if your computer gets a, mal uh, a piece of malware, it can then become part of a network of bots online. Okay, so maybe you got an email from somebody you don't know, you open the file and you've got malware on your system, right? That email may have been sent to a million people and maybe 50 people also downloaded it. And then those 50 people who downloaded it on their computers will be a part of 50 computers on the network, a botnet network. And then that network can then uh, do things, for example, uh, control well, it basically controls your computer's behavior, um, and uh, it can visit websites, it can click on advertisements, for example. Um, there's so much that, uh, uh, that can happen. Now, the person controlling this botnet will be in control of the command and control server, C and C. You, 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 if you look into cybercrime and cybersecurity, you'll probably see this CNC server uh, quite often. This is basically the server which controls the botnet. Okay? Um, a zero day exploit. What do you think that means? A zero day exploit is basically a vulnerability. Do you know what a vulnerability is? Okay. A zejak said that other people didn't know about before. So a zero day exploit is a vulnerability that people didn't know before. For example, recently um, there was in the news Microsoft Word had a, a big vulnerability, right? Um, and some hackers exploited the, the zero day exploit and installed malware onto many people's systems by sending Microsoft Word documents that looked like standard Word documents but contained a piece of code which then downloaded other things and then you had a malware on your computer. Okay, so a zero-day exploit is a zejak said that zero-day Okay, so day zero. Um, Okay, so um, does, is that okay, everybody? Any questions? No? Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, Microsoft Word is a uh, uh, safety word. Excuse me? Yeah, Microsoft Word is a is, is it safety or good safety? Is it safe? safe. Um, on Windows, mm -hmm. not safe. On Mac, it's safe, apparently. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the recent exploit was on Windows computers. But you know, nothing is completely safe. You don't know until somebody exploits, finds a zero-day exploit. 
Okay, and then when the hacker uses that to target victims, and then, then it becomes a zero day exploit. And then you thought Microsoft Word is safe? Um, I trust it. I trust them. Well, you know, you shouldn't trust everybody. <laughs> because then, you know, maybe you, you open every Microsoft Word document and some of them will give you viruses. It's true. So that was the most recent case, right? Um, now, I will go through the material myself. There's a camera in the back. If you don't want to be in it, don't look at the camera. Otherwise, it'll just be in the back of your head. Um, okay, line four. Named as the biggest new threat to Americans, America's banking system, if Jenny Bogachev enjoys admiration and apparent sanctuary in his home in a resort on Russia's Black Sea coast, his FBI most wanted page shows a grinning, shaven headed figure accused of a string of very grand thefts across America, with a total haul est estimated at more than $100 million and tricks that ran rings around the police. The case against Evgeny Bogachev could form yet another sequel to the Ocean's Eleven heist movies. So the Ocean's Eleven heist, that was, uh, anyone seen Ocean's Eleven? Yes, what's that about? Oh, it's about the story of the uh, thief. Robbing a bank? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in 2017, would you, if you're going to rob a bank, would you do it Analog with guns, or would you do it digitally? Mm -hmm. Which one? Digital starting? Hmm? Sorry, is it my preference? Yes, if you were going to rob a bank. I know you work at one place. <laughs> <laughs> Let's forget that. Sorry. Digitally. Why? Uh, maybe the, 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 the banks or the you know, any securities that are related to the systems, basically. So maybe it could be very. This is our skill to open the skill. Less, what is, less, what is, less riskier. Mm -hmm. Risky. What, sorry, what did you say? Uh, system. System. Is yeah. it related to the uh, networks or skill? Uh, what do you say? Yes. Why? Yes. Well, why scam instead of rob a bank? Uh, the bank is secure by the system, isn't it? Um, so you would prefer to attack the system using digital methods? Yes. Why? Um, the, even if I break a uh, bank uh, with a gun or something, Maybe the alert or uh, as a security system become warning and the police will concern. So. Oh, if you do it analog? Yeah. Okay. So analog is too secure. Right. Yes? Uh, any other reasons why you would scam a bank instead of rob a bank? Scam or sorry. Any other reasons? Causes them? There are logical reasons why criminals have moved from using guns to rob banks to using the internet and computers. This is one of them. Because I think uh, less, I feel I no, less guilty. Using the digital, <laughs> digital robbing the bank. Yes, the penalty is much lower. Yeah. Right. If you have a gun, then you're looking at charges of attempted murder. Mm -hmm. Right. Like you try to kill somebody. Whereas if you're using a digital method, you're not going to kill anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. So the penalties are much uh, less. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's more logical. It's a risk reward trade off. The risk is much lower. What else? Maybe some, some hacker want to test their uh, technique, technique in a high 
high level of testing. I think personal skill. Okay. Personal skill just use this method can uh, scrap a bug. No. I mean, the people the hacker uh, don't know their personal level, personal skill. Okay. For, for this, To try to test skills. Yes. Okay. Maybe to test. We'll test the defense. Right. Uh, any other reasons? Yes. Steal um, more than just money. You can steal customer data as well. Mm -hmm. So there's more opportunities than just walking into a bank and taking the money. Data more There's a few other um, reasons. For example, if you rob a bank uh, in person, physically, you can only walk out with the amount of money that fits in your bag. There is no limit to how much you can take. Right? So some banks have lost $8 million, some have lost $100,000. There is no upper, lower limit. Right? Um, Another thing is uh, people have their new uh, attack surfaces, which, which attack surface means a uh, weeks to the kill men, right? Because people are using more e-bank, uh, e-banking, right? Right. So that's uh, there are many more zero-day exploits if you have e-banking, right? Um, uh, what else? There's anonymity. Right? You can you can hide your identity online while you steal things. And furthermore, it's global, right? You could be in Japan and if you're if you have skills you can probably rob a bank in America. Uh, but if that happens, then maybe the Japanese police will come to you. But if you live in Russia, right, where Russia does not have good relations with America the Russian police are not really going to care, right? So the penalties are even, even lower. So then you understand why there is so much money in cybercrime now. And it's true, actually. It's, what's more, most interesting now is, you know the international drug trade is worth a lot of money, right? Drugs. Cybercrime is worth more than drugs now. So that just shows you how uh, profitable it has become. Okay, uh, let's move on. Line 11. But the man named last week as the biggest new threat to America's banking system has never needed a gun, nor is he even thought to have set foot in the United States. Instead, under the code name Lucky12345, he carried out his entire operation via strokes of a keyboard from his house in Russia's Black Sea coast masterminding what is thought to be the most sophisticated cybercrime network the world has ever seen. Using so-called malware, malicious software that enslaves computers and steals usernames and passwords, the 30-year-old and his gang allegedly hacked into hundreds of thousands of bank accounts, emptying up to $7 million at a time from unsuspecting firms across America. 
most were unaware that the attacks from a program called Game Over Zeus, or GOZ, had even happened. So, uh, Kaori san, how do you think you can get malware on your system? Hmm. How, how, do you, how do you get malware on your computer? Now, how, how do you... Okay, lots of people got infected with this virus, yeah, this malware, G-O-Z. How did people get infected by G-O-Z? What kind of behavior will attract, well, yeah, malware onto your device? Yes. Mm -hmm. Opening emails, uh, especially yeah, downloading co uh, attachments, mm -hmm. right? How how do you get ma malware? Other, uh, how, how else do you get malware? Other ways? What do you want? To print so called uh, link to the site. So, uh, who said that? Go with that. Dodgy links. Clicking on, well, clicking on uh, links, okay. Unknown links. Yes? Download the suspicious programs. Download, downloading. Okay, so downloading, for example, free software. Or P2P. You know P2P? Torrento? You know torrents? Torrento? You don't know torrents? Uh, torrents are basically uh, ways in which people can share files, right? share music, movies, uh, adult videos, um, software, right? So you can, you can easily download this for free online, but you're always running the risk of somebody packaging a malware into the torrent as well. That's why it's free. Nothing is free in the world. No, no such thing as a free lunch. How else? Using the infected USB or... Uh, infected devices can spread malware. Yes? Connecting free Wi-Fi spots. Free Wi-Fi spots. I've not heard of that, but I think that that would be possible. Uh, free Wi-Fi spots. Well, unsecured connections. Now, so you, I'm sure you've seen sometimes it says on your browser screen, um, Anato no Please click. Have you seen that? So you right. That's called scareware. They scare you into clicking on something, and then, boom, you have a malware on your system. Now, 
Uh, Yaiko san, you mentioned clicking on uh, unknown links. It's true, actually. It's really scary now that just browsing, just clicking on sites and going to different sites can get you malware because it's um, if you have a vulnerability, for example, if your browser is very old, right, and you're going onto a new website which has malware on it, it can do something called a drive-by download. You know what that is? <laughs> drive-by. Look at think about a drive-through. McDonald, you drive through. They give you the the, the, the cheeseburger, mm -hmm. and then you go. Right. But a drive-by download is like that, but you never know that you're downloading something. It doesn't tell you. Usually when you download something, it will say, oh, you've got 200 kilobytes or something. Mm -hmm. Right? If you go to some sites, it will attempt to download, do a drive-by download. It's, it's really dangerous, actually. Um, uh, and uh, that, that's actually a, a, an area I'll talk about. Uh, in a bit. So, uh, yes, if you're out of date, if you're using old software, then you're more vulnerable. There's many, many ways of getting malware onto your system, right? Uh, let's move on. Line 21. A second program known as ransomware would freeze victims' computer files and threaten to destroy them unless an online ransom was paid. It targeted not just businesses, but ordinary home computer users, freezing precious online family photo, uh, family photo albums and even children's school projects. To US law enforcement's considerable embarrassment, one other victim was a police station in Massachusetts, which had to pay up to retrieve its database of mugshots. Now, do you know anybody who has become a victim of ransomware? Never? I know one person, he uh, basically received an email, he said it was an invoice, right? So he deals with uh, trade uh, internationally, so he thought that it's just an invoice from one of his clients. He opened it and then his computer changed, uh, the screen changed and it said that you have to pay 300,000 yen, San Germain, in bitcoins um, to decrypt your data. Encrypt means angoka. So angoka will kaiju costs 300,000 yen. He didn't pay, uh, but uh, I think his bosses were not happy with what happened. That's called ransomware. Minoshiro uh, Line 27. Yet even a massive global operation to dismantle his network last weekend in which a dozen national police forces, including Britain, shut down hijack hijacked servers and freed up to 300,000 computers, the malware remains a threat. For one, he still appears to be at large in Russia, where officials have little, shown little interest in helping the FBI in the wake of the sanctions slapped on Moscow over its annexation of Crimea. And for another, it is only a short matter of time before the network is up and running again, hitting not just America, but Britain as well. Now from this paragraph, we see that cybercrime is not just cybercrime, it's about geopolitics as well. Geopolitics is Chisega. Right? So if Russia has a bad relationship with America, even if the cyber, crime, the cyber criminals get caught, there is little that can be done about it. Right? So this is uh, another layer of complexity. Yuri um, Line 34. On Monday, British police said that some 15,000 British computer users had already been infected with the GOZ virus and warned that it would only be a fortnight before it hijacked new servers to operate from. Having identified victims from a hijacked server, police urged them to install antivirus software before it was too late. Nobody wants their personal financial details, business information, or photographs of loved ones to be stolen or held to ransom by criminals. 
said Andy Archibald, uh, Deputy Director of the National Crime Agency's Cybercrime Unit. Most victims would not be happy either the way Bogachev was hailed as a hero last week by fellow Russians in his hometown of Anapa, a balmy beach resort 70 miles from Crimea. Using details in the US indictment unsealed against him last week, the Telegraph visited the last known address at 120 Lermontova, a, a skyscraper of $250,000 uh, a time flat, flats, where he was last seen just a few days ago. Their neighbors remember a quiet, affable figure who sailed a yacht at the local marina and whose only involvement in cyber activity was the bumper sticker on his aging Volvo sedan, which advertised his services for computer repairs. When told, though, of how he was now a public enemy number one in the United States, many were delighted. What a talented guy, said Mikhail, who recognized Bogachev's FBI photo as the man who would, he would see in the lobby with his wife and nine-year-old daughter. Sitting at his computer at home, he broke into our enemy's camp, but did not harm his fellow Russians. What a great dude, added Vaskin Atanasov, a taxi driver. Judging by what Americans do to other people, what Bogachev is said to have done to them serves them right. So, how do you feel about this sentiment of anti-Americanism? Um, causalism. <clears throat> I American. Mm. Americanism. Yes. <clears throat> How do you feel about this sentiment? This uh, causal. Causal. Uh, or cookie. Cookie. Yes. And atmosphere. Atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, Americans uh, <coughs> always uh, sell a uh, weapon over the world. Mm. I, I don't like, like it. Uh, it's not just the Americans, you know. Uh, America uh, company. Mm. Um, well, the Americans sell weapons. Russians that sell weapons, the Japanese sell weapons as well. Mitsubishi Jugo is a very big supplier as well. Um, okay, but you have this image of America selling more weapons than everybody else. Um, to understand anti-Americanism, cybercrime, and geopolitics, and how they all interact with each other. That's why I asked the question, because I'm interested in what you guys think as Japanese as well. Yes, Kaoi-san. 
America wants to control other countries. Yes, the policeman of the world. certainly the image that pe people have and so that it's natural for them to attract enemies, right? Or challenges. Uh, anyone else? Jim Pasan? Um, I just thought um, the Chinese government is trying to Accentuated further because a cyber attack can be more damaging right. than a physical attack, right? With bombs and things like that. Cyber crime yeah. is uh, uh, as much uh, as uh, as costly as a physical attack. Um, yeah. Uh, on the point uh, about uh, America being the policeman of the world, I think. I mean, the same could be said of any country, but. There is this kind of feeling around the world of American hypocrisy, right? So, for example, um, right now North Korea is said to be developing nuclear weapons, uh, and police and well, police <laughs> America does not want this, but America has nuclear weapons as well. So there is a hypocrisy. Why do they get to have weapons, and why don't we have? We have to protect ourselves as well. So, um, this kind of hypocrisy just makes, I think, people um, question the authority of the United States um, and it makes it a, an attractive target as well for this kind of attack because a physical attack against America is almost impossible. It's too far away, first, and uh, they are much, much stronger. So, that makes cybercrime the actual war, the, the field of war for the future. If you think about cybercrime, think about war. And that's going to be the case for the next 10, 20 years, I would say, at least. Okay, um, uh, let's move on. 95. While not voiced by all of Bogachev's neighbors, such comments show how the anti-Americanism that has lain dormant in Russia since the end of the Cold War has re-erupted since the confrontation with the West over Ukraine. As lone agents exposing holes in America's cyber defenses, Russian cyber hackers are seen as combining the cunning of a KGB spy with the brains of a Soviet-era scientist. Whether the Kremlin shares the view, that view of Bogachev is unclear. But right now, there seems little sign of him facing any court. Russian law already forbids the extradition of any of its citizens abroad. Um, can anybody think of any other incident involving cybercrime and governments exchanging people? Can you, can you remember any other incidents of cybercrime 
and governments uh, related, to, related to cybercrime and governments exchanging people. I forgot his name. <laughs> American guy. Yeah. Snowden. Snowden. <laughs> Snowden, yes. What does Snowden do? Yeah, he stole the information from the uh, Pentagon and... <laughs> NSA. NSA, National Security Agency. And National Security, and then he opened the secret documents yes. to over the world. Yes. yes, and where is he now? Uh, he's in Russia still now. Yeah. Yes, he's in Russia where he's safe. Um, any other people? Cybercrime? Panda, Panda, Wikileaks. Yes. Julian Assange. Uh, and where is he? Where is he now? He 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 is uh, in London. No. 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 London. Yes, he's in London, but he cannot. He stays in the Ecuadorian embassy. He cannot leave the embassy. He's uh, always, he's been there for I don't know, five. Long. Apparently, yes. Um, so, cybercrime and governments are really really. Um, interconnected and it's almost like a kind of game of cat and mouse right so the Russians have Snowden and they're letting Bogachev do whatever he wants um, and the Americans can't get to him. so it's an embarrassment and there's no reason why the Russians will give Bogachev to the Americans right um, okay um, yes line 63. And while Washington said last week that it had sought Russia's help in tracking Bogachev down, the fact that the FBI simultaneously issued a wanted poster of him suggests that help has not been forthcoming. However, neighbors said they had seen no police activity at Bogachev's home. And judging by the attitude of officers at Napa's central police station, just 200 yards down the road, it seems likely to remain that way. Refusing to say whether or not they had been asked to arrest Bogachev, one policeman added, I'd pin a medal on that guy. So too did the FBI in a backhanded way. Describing GOZ last week as the most sophisticated cyber scam that it had ever seen, Bogachev and his criminal network implemented the kind of cyber crimes that you might not believe if you saw them in a science fiction movie, said Leslie Caldwell, an attorney involved in the case. Like many computer scams, GOZ works by sending unsolicited emails containing infected, in, infected file, often a receipt or shipping confirmation. Clicking on it allows the user's computer to be accessed remotely by the hackers. They then wait until the user logs into online banking systems and other sensitive websites, stealing their passwords to empty their accounts. Um, Okay, so if a hacker gains control of your computer in this way, how can the hacker make money? Let's explore the way that hackers make money. Okay, so your PC. So it has become part of the botnet uh, network. How can the hacker then make money from this? Yeah, because they account. Okay. So what happens is uh, what's it called a uh, uh, form jacking, I think. Uh, I think that's the best word. So jacking means uh, okay, or grabbing, I think. Uh, so if you are, if your computer gets hacked, right, it becomes a victim of the GOZ malware, and you want to make an online banking transaction, 
the, the, the bot will become active, right? And it will know that you're accessing maybe Musable or some other website. And then it will take the details, it will log it, right? But how, what else can they do, do you think? If you gain complete control of the computer, what, can you, what else would you do? It's okay, use your creativity. <laughs> if you had control of my computer, what would you do? No, I don't I know the answer, but uh, I think we, we, did, we did people to enter, you know, steal the people's account, ID and the password, and then uh, steal the, uh, transfer the money to other to another account. Mm -hmm. So the hunter will get the money. Yes. So that was the old way of doing it. Right? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, there are more uh, layers of security. So now there's more, like for example, if you, have a, if you open a bank account, an online bank account, they will give you a card mm -hmm. with some numbers on the back, mm -hmm. right? and then you have to ma match it. That's a response to this type of fraud. Okay? So this doesn't work so much anymore, but there's other ways of doing it. What else? There's so many ways to make money. <laughs> First of all, uh, mm -hmm. I wanted the uh, offline this computers and use the other computers. No, no, if you were the hacker. Oh, hacker. Yes, if you became the hacker of my computer, what would you do? How are you going to make money? We buy many things. Maybe, uh, like Amazon Prime. Maybe I can get some stuff in the shop town and then I will, I will send the stuff to the beer or curry or kind of bread or something like that. Good. <laughs> Stuffing. Stuffers. Right, so you can order things online and then have them delivered to other addresses. Uh, again, uh, e-commerce sites have upped their security. Now it's a little bit more difficult to do that compared to before. Uh, but there's so many methods. Oh, put your ha hacking hats on. What do you do? Maxa. <laughs> if you have uh, some yeah stock market accounts, I will <laughs> use it to buying or selling some stocks. But um, why? And That's my stock account. <laughs> <laughs> But I can manage it if I <laughs> hack your account, and uh, I have just I have to change the bank account. Oh what? No, I don't think you can transfer stock stocks uh, so to get it. other people's bank account. But maybe you can you can uh, sell all your stocks, mm. move it to my account, yeah. and then transfer that. Yeah. So that's basically banking fraud again. Mm. Okay. That's pretty much the same as that, but a different way of looking for other money. Yes. Anything else? Well, if you think this doesn't work so well anymore, right? The form jacking. Do you know what they do now? They use a thing called web inject. And for example, if you go to a site, uh, maybe Miserable. You don't work with anybody. No. Okay, good. So maybe they will say, please enter your password here. Now, the interesting thing about a web inject is this is a, a browser attack. So if you have, uh, for example, an old version of Google Chrome and you have uh, your, your computer is hacked, what the malware can do is it can inject additional form entries, like your mother's maiden name. So this is real. This is real innovation. Or your address, right? The 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 hacker can then just inject, and, and you still be on this site, right? 
So if, if, they inject, if they inject these form entries, they're gaining information from you that is in your head, not necessarily on your computer, and they're taking that from you. And this is a real nefarious type of attack. Nefarious means to wait. Akushna, right? But this is, this this happens. It's called a web inject, right? Um, okay. So once they have these details, what do they do? They sell that, right? On the online forums. You understand the Akushna? Yes. No. Which is yes. So if you, if you have customer data, if you have credit card data, if you have addresses, that information becomes more valuable and then you can sell that on the dark web uh, to other hackers who can use that. Okay. Um, what else can you do if you hack my computer? Yes. Maximize your profit. So, for example, ad fraud. If your computer gets hacked, right, and it's being controlled, you can do wide scale ad fraud, which is basically uh, click fraud. Click fraud is when, for example, you know there's a massive online marketing industry like Google, right? Many companies advertise online, and every time there's a click, Money is paid to the advertiser. Uh, no, money is paid to the publisher, right? So, there's, if you have a million computers and you're controlling them, you can run scripts that will make them click on ads all day, right? Even when you're sleeping. And it's much faster than a human click, right? And then they have very sophisticated networks where a botnet can be instructed to run an ad fraud campaign, and that can generate massive amounts of money. If you, for example, if you have, a, if you're a publisher and you find a stupid customer, right, an ad network that doesn't check who's clicking, is it a human click or is it a bot click? You never know. You could be using the computer, and in the background there could be a browser, a very small browser, and it could be clicking on many, many ads, right? It's that's one way that they use uh, they spend, uh, make money from uh, uh, this type of bot. How else? Well, we talked about ransomware before, right? So if you download malware. Um, What that can do is it can then go and download automatically ransomware onto your computer, right? Because maybe the ad fraud is not enough, right? There's other ways of getting money from you, just like this type of tactic. Right? How else? There's there's another way of making money. Have you ever heard of DDoS attacks? DDoS call you never heard of this? You know? Okay, DDoS is one of the big problems right now. A DDoS attack is when you have massive amounts of connections being made to a website. Right? So if you try to go to ntt.com along with one million other people, the 
the server crashes and then the website is rendered useless, right? And what they do is uh, let them pop. <laughs> what they do is they uh, basically extort companies um, and force them to pay money if they don't want to become victims of DDoS attacks. So if you control a massive network of computers, right? And then you, you, all, you tell them all to access NTT, it's just going to break down, right? So that's another way that you can use um, the, the GOZ network, right? so super, super harmful malware. Is there anything else that you can do? You're all too nice, you don't have the kind of hacking mindset, but if you have access to the computer, right, the computer becomes your slave, you can look at their information, right? This is very interesting because if you have infected one million computers, then there may be some government employees, right? So you can do you can do a search, right? Search for maybe police or something, or Department of Defense, or I don't know, Gaimsho or something, right? They can search your computer for all of these things and maybe find some information that is valuable for a government. Right? Um, so, this type of cyber crime, you can make a lot of money from it. And they, they got really rich, these guys. But it doesn't end there. They can use it to do espionage. Right, boy. Okay. So, um, there's so many ways of attacking a computer, right, once you gain entry with malware, so you've got to be really be careful. Um, okay, now I think it's time that I uh, explained this diagram. Yeah. So we have this guy, Bogachev, right? Do you think that he operated alone? Call this one. Do you think that Bogachev operated on his own? To make money, if you're going to do uh, cyber crime, you need to organize, right? Then it becomes an organized crime. Um, and I want to just explain to you um, how a cyber crime organization is structured. At the top, you'll have the leader, right? The leader of the criminal organization, which is could be the same as this guy. This is the virus writer, right? The person who created the virus, the person who created GOZ. So that would be Bobachev. Now, this is also the person who controls the scam. And an important part of the chain is here. So this guy is called the mule manager. Money mule manager, actually. 
What's a mule in Japanese? Dashiko? You know? You know? So what does a mule do? Just go, just go. Hmm? Uh, what, 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 what is it? Sorry, I'm, I'm, my ears back. Ore ore sagi. Ore ore sagi. That's a little bit different. A mule is somebody who carries money, right? So you have all of this money that you have stolen from around the world in your bank account. Well, you don't actually want it in your bank account. You have it in other people's accounts. You have it in this, these people's accounts, right? So. Once, once you have committed the cyber crime, you will send the cash to people that you control, your mules, dashiko, right? And usually, uh, these people are then controlled by some type of gang member, right? It could be Yamaguchi Kumi also. In America, you have Russian gangsters, and then they have uh, maybe Russian girls who don't have much money, but they can open accounts in America. And then they have account, they open in their names, and they, sometimes they don't even know that they have, are part of a scam. Right. So this is a typical way uh, somebody who, uh, an organization that steals money, large amounts of money, can retrieve that money, okay, and make it into cash. But these guys, they all make money in between as well. Right. So maybe 10%, 20%, 50%. .00. The final sum is actually not that much for the leader. Um, and then, here you have the systems administrator. Right? And what this guy does is he, he manages the command and control server. Now if you remember, we talked about the command and control server. Uh, what is the command and control server again? Uh, you, son. You remember? Mm, sorry, I don't know the command and control server. Maybe uh, this server collects all the information still to uh, other person PC. Yes, so it, maybe yes. It, it's, uh, yes. So, so that, that's. So that server needs to be maintained by somebody, and that would be done by the IT guy of the organization. Um, and then you have a programmer. So the programmer will then basically create the code, for example, for secondary ways of making money. So the person who is at the top, the leader, will make the, the malware, the original malware, the entry into your computer. And then the other ways of making money after that will be designed by a programmer. So they could make a web inject, or maybe they will make a phishing site, right? a phishing website, or maybe they'll manage an email spam campaign. Right? Um, and then you have here hackers. Now these guys are very interesting because right now we're talking about small amounts of money against individual people, right? But if you want to target a big bank, it's much, much harder. So you need to use other techniques, for example, social engineering, which is basically like a hane like, like that kind of thing. Um, and you need really sophisticated people who can break into a, a system. Right. So you need something more than just malware, and then these people become very, very important. So this is almost like a, a company, if you think about it. There's many people involved, everybody has their own jobs, uh, and there are promotional opportunities too. But um, you know, if, a com if, a, if the police find you, right, like we talked about before, they can use you for espionage. And then it's possible that a government will allow you to carry on with your activities, your criminal activities, um, as long as you give them some information and access to the victims that you uh, have infected. 
Okay. Um, so, now's the question. How can you avoid becoming a victim of this type of cybercrime? Antivirus. Yeah. Okay. Install an antivirus. That's one way of protecting against malware that is known, but not for zero day exploits, right? New vulnerabilities. Uh, any other ways of prevention? You have to um, you have to control your behavior, right? Because if you unwittingly click on something, that could lead to a whole host of big problems. Okay. What else? They use a big uh, bank or big securities. So there, if I stole my money, they are own. Sorry. Big big company, uh, big. Uh, bank or big securities, big banks, and are only that money. If we are stolen, was stolen, yes. Oh, oh, they will give you the money back. Hmm. Oh, yeah, um. Okay. Could be. Use a big bank for risk hedging. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other ways? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, of course, understand how hackers work. Yes? More ideas? Hire a hacker. Hire a hacker. To police. Uh, what do you mean? To secure your network? What do you mean? You're going to hire a hacker. He's a criminal by design. You're going to give him money, access to your computer. If you have a different strategy, then maybe it makes sense. Maybe hire an expert. Is that what you mean? Uh, but the well, American big security company uses hacker as a program. Yes. Because hacker is really well, ex <laughs> expert for mm -hmm. the security. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. so yes. Is, yeah. yeah, companies will give hackers money to mm -hmm. find zero day exploits. Mm -hmm. right? So maybe a company like Apple will get some hackers in a room and then say, Listen, if you can hack our system, we'll give you $1,000, mm -hmm. right? So they do these kind of uh, events to try to find uh, uh, vulnerabilities, of course. Uh, but let's talk about, you know, yourselves. What can you do? Change the password um, often. Change your password often, right? So you use a strong password, mm -hmm. right? Not your name, but some, some, but yes. It doesn't matter, right? Because they don't guess your password. They just copy <coughs> your password. So if it's long or complicated, they just copy it. So yes. It but doesn't matter. The whole idea is to create what's called a defense in depth, which means, although 
you make multiple layers of defense. Right? So if the hackers cannot copy your password, right, and if they have some different malware which cannot copy your password, then that's fine. But if they can, then it may be a problem. But the problem, the, the thing is, you want to make it as difficult as possible for yeah, the hackers. Yes. So one of the things is a uh, strong password, yes. updating it. Yeah. Right. And a different password for each, you know, the online uh, site. Each account. Yes. Each yes. Account. Thanks. Which is almost impossible <laughs> to do. These days, yes. But the problem is really <laughs> difficult to memorize. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah, you to have to <laughs> make a note. <laughs> Yes. Each time. <laughs> In total. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely. But um, you want to make it as difficult for yourself as well. That's true. Right. Yeah. You want to protect yourself. Uh, what else? Party song? simple for the hackers to hack you. Oh, okay. So if you have diff different information on different devices, then you have more risk diversification. So one way of protecting yourself is to update your system, update your apps to the latest version uh, all the time. Because engineers are always finding new vulnerabilities, new exploits, and then they will, when, with the update or the patch, they will fix these problems for you, right? How many times, like for me, I'm, I'm very bad with updating my system, right? But once I update it, I'm protected from the new threats. So, you know, that's one thing that you should do. Uh, you should also review your banking information all the time. Make sure that nobody is taking money from your account uh, illegally. Right? So you can just check your statement often. Um, and protect your personal information. Right? Don't leave all your passwords on your computer. Because if somebody accesses that, then they have your passwords and everything. So you have to keep your personal information safe. Um, and the one thing I would say that I would add is uh, trust no one, don't trust anyone. <laughs> that's, basic, that's the basic principle uh, that you should uh, always uh, employ. Right, so how many times have you seen messages come from your friends which don't look like their messages? Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Never? On Facebook, somebody uh, upda yeah. you know, updated a strange status. Uh, yes. You've seen that? Yeah. Or emails from your friends advertising some kind of product? They've been hacked, right? So it's easy for somebody to think, oh, this is from my friend, so it must be safe. That is a social engineering attack. Social, not the show. It exploits the trust between your friends. And uh, that is probably when people are the most vulnerable, right? So if you trust nobody, then you'll be safe. Right? So just be careful on your, in your online activities. Uh, and Yes, if you can remember how an organization like this functions, then you can see that there's some serious motivation behind it to take money from your accounts. And actually, for me, personally, when I was preparing for this lesson, I really started to get really paranoid about there being something in my computer that I didn't know was there. So I think it's, it's time when you go home, check 
check. Uh, you, there's ways of checking on on your computer um, if there's if it's part of a botnet network. So thank you very much for coming today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I know today was a little bit difficult uh, with the specialist topic, but I hope you learned something. Yeah. Uh, the lesson is based on donations, so if you enjoyed it, please leave something. If not, no pressure at all. It's okay. Uh, the next lesson is going to be May 17th. It's going to be at uh, DMM's new office again. Uh, it's going to be a big seminar, and the topic is going to be, I think, how to survive in the age of artificial intelligence, AI. So I hope to see you there. Thank you very much. <laughs>